Hello and welcome to BlenderTutor.com. My name is Tom Latvies and this is the third tutorial in the Blender Bootcamp series. In this tutorial we're going to go over uh, modeling basics in Blender. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the finished image that I created that will we'll make something roughly similar to this by the end of this tutorial. Um, so let's get into Blender. Here's my finished scene. Um, it's pretty basic. There's only a few objects. Um, let's create a new project. Start from scratch. I'm going to save this real quick. Let's call it two. Okay, so before we get into modeling, I just want to go over a few basics. Um, so let's get rid of this cube real quick. So to delete objects, you just hit X, delete. Uh, one moment, I'm going to turn on my screencast keys. To create a new object, you can hit Shift A. It'll bring up this menu to add uh, all these different objects. In the mesh category, we will choose, we'll just choose a cylinder for now, just as an example. And a lot of the time when you create a new object, it's going to uh, give you a little menu over here on the left side in your toolbar. Um, if it's closed, just hit T to bring it up. So I added the cylinder and it's giving me all these options over here now. So the most important ones are going to be the amount of vertices on it, which are each one of these flat faces is uh, basically equivalent to how many vertices you have. So um, this is a lot for something Depending on what you're making, you might need more or less, but for now, I'm going to simplify it down to like 12. As you can see, it loses uh, some resolution, but that'll be okay. Um, radius will just, you know, it's pretty obvious. It tells you how big the radius of the cylinder will be. Depth is the same way. It's pretty much how tall it is. And then the cap fill type, you could have N-GON, which is basically this whole top circle face. is going to be one object with uh, 12 sides. Or you can do triangle fan, which will be, I'll show you, but basically it'll be one point in the center. So the thing you have to keep in mind is when you're making, when you have this little menu to decide all the options, once you, once you uh, tab into edit mode or if you do anything to this object, like if I rotate it or, well, actually it looks like I still have that there. It looks like if I don't finalize anything to it, since I'm right clicking once I, I move it, and I'm not saving that movement, it's keeping it there. But if I were to uh, scale this like that, and then left click, you can see I just lost my menu now. So make sure you don't adjust it until you're sure that's what you want. So now if I go into edit mode, you can see I have this, basically all these triangles, which is the other option, the other one would be uh, NGON. So just like how we could delete the whole object with X, if I'm in edit mode and I select a, a vertex like this, I could hit X and delete just that vertice. And now uh, it'll open it up for me. So already right here you can see how, uh, how much you could start doing modeling wise uh, just by doing that I could scale this up and I already have almost like a little bowl or something. So basically all of these 3D objects are made of these uh, vertices which are just points in a 3D grid um, and to model something you're basically going to be continuously adding more vertices and shaping it in the shape of whatever you're modeling. So uh, if I wanted to make a better bowl like this. I might uh, go into my front view and you could add more vertices by adding something called an edge loop where if I hit control R it's gonna give me this pink line. Now if I left click on it it's gonna semi enter it where now I could adjust the height of this uh, line and if I were to just right click, it's going to keep it right in the center. Now if I scale this up, you can see I could start to shape this object a little better. 
going to add another interesting. So it's not letting me add an edge loop down here. Okay. So I'll just move that up. And actually here, so let me show you what an n-gon is. An n-gon is basically any face with more than four vertices. So I'll delete that and I could uh, select everything in this circle. All these bottom connected ones that, that are called um, an edge loop. If I hold down alt and right click, it'll let me select anything in that line. It'll go the same way for uh, vertical lines. So I could select that and if I just hit F, it'll fill in those vertices and create a face which with something now that is called an n-gon, which is basically just what I said. Um, it's a face with more than four vertices. Now what we're going to go over is something called extruding, which is one of the most powerful tools in modeling. It's basically taking a set of vertices and extruding out um, or creating new vertices from those and cr it, it, it's connecting to those. So it's basically, you could almost, if you have an image, you could trace the image in a way or, you know, you could use it for all sorts of things. So uh, by two extrude vertices, you just hit, with vertices selected, you hit the E button and now you can see it just uh, created a whole new ring. Um, now I could bring those up. Scale it up a little more. Extrude again. Lock to the Z. And uh, you can see I could shape this any way I want now. I could even uh, extrude again, size it in a little. If I hit Z, I could uh, hear, see it in wireframe uh, mode. Extrude down again. down again and now I could fill in that face and I pretty much have a pretty rough bowl um, now say I want to smooth this out I could uh, go over to my modifiers panel and um, I could add the subdivision surface modifier which is another one that you're gonna be using a lot especially with uh, organic shapes or any kind of round shapes like this um, and as you can see, that kind of smoothed out my edge, whereas this was nice and flat up here, and if I want it to stay that way, there's a couple things I could do, but this way, this is one way, so basically we're going to go in here and add another vertice, or uh, an edge loop, and um, if you bring it up like that, it, you could see it's flattening this out and now I could do that on this other side as well and you can see now I have a much flatter uh, bowl like that and I could do some smooth shading and uh, you know add one more division like that and now I have a nice smooth bowl and this is basically how we're going to create our mug as well so that's just a very basic overview of it I'm going to delete that and I'm going to show you how to add a back image that you could start using for uh, tra uh, tracing. So basically in the right toolbar, you bring it up by hitting N. Um, you'll see there's this little uh, panel here that says background images. And if I hit this, bring it down, I'll check that on. I'll hit add image. And now it's added this little uh, option menu right here. All you have to do is hit open and it'll let you open up a image file that you could then use as your background. So I have already a bunch of reference photos that I've found. If I go up into this view right here, it's going to actually let me look at the images. So I have my coffee mug image. I just found that on Google. And now this gives me this nice little background image that I could use to uh, start modeling with. Um, you could, you know, mess around with the opacity of it, um, size of it, and then you can move it around. Generally, if you're going to want to keep something, if you're going to have something symmetrical like this, you can um, try to keep it 
centered like that and now I can move it up cool and uh, alright so let's get started a lot of the time these reference images are going to be at an angle that it's not perfect to trace to since you're modeling from a perfect side view you can never really exactly match uh, your reference image so you have to kind of just use it as a reference image and um, use your best judgment as to what's going to look better so uh, with this one you could either start with a circle or a cylinder I'll just start with a circle and what I'm going to do I'm going to bring that down to like 16 and I'm pretty happy with that size right there so I'll just get started I'm going to actually move that up to about there scale it down a little bit that'll be my base of my mug now I hit tab into edit mode extrude up um, hit Z to lock it to the Z axis I'm going to scale it up and I'm, I'm literally just going to start tracing this mug um, I could actually hit Z to tab into wireframe mode again so I could see through it a little easier. Z. And I'll just start tracing that. And then we're going to worry about the, uh, the handle afterwards. And I'll bring that up to there. And actually down here, I usually like to round it off a little, so I'm going to extrude down just a little bit. And I'm going to scale it in just a bit. Extrude Z. A little more. Okay, and now I'm going to just fill in this bottom face. And uh, we'll go to the top now. I'm going to do something uh, similar. I'm just going to round it off a bit. So, scale that down. There we go. And then, this last one, I'll just scale in a bit. And we'll just uh, bring that down to there. Try to make it even so the, the thickness of this mug is pretty even. And then with this one, we can just go down a ways. Doesn't need to be perfect. Probably not going to see the inside of the mug too much anyway. And I will just uh, run that off a little bit as well. And then I'll just uh, finish that off with the face again. So now I already have my basic shape of my mug. Put on smooth shading for that. Oh, and so uh, as you can see, when you start with a circle, and you uh, extrude like this and you start modeling and then you turn on smooth shading you're, you get these weird lines through your through your uh, object to solve that basically all each face has a normal it's basically the the direction it's pointing and most of these are pointing outwards which is what you want but when you see something like that that means the normals are messed up some of them are pointing the wrong way so to fix that you go into uh, edit mode, hit A to select all, and go over to your left tool menu. And if you go down a little bit, you're going to have uh, normals. You can recalculate that. And as you can see, that just solved that for us. So uh, cool. So that's all fixed. Now we're going to create our handle. With this, we're going to create it in another way. We're going to create something with something called curves. So instead of extruding vertices, we're going to basically use uh, vector lines, which are just basically 
points using mathematical equations to create a perfect curve and uh, from that we could create a mesh object so I'm gonna go add curve and just use uh, this top one right here where did that put it so I put it down here you know what? let's delete that and I could actually just start it right here by right clicking and moving my 3d cursor right here add my curve again and uh, it's actually already curved, you can see. So I'm going to rotate it along the X. Oop. There we go. And uh, now if I go into edit mode, you can see basically I've got these two points. So I'm going to move this one down here. And I'll move this one right here. I'm actually going to hide it a little inside of the mesh so that it's sticking out. So now I can just rotate rotate this like that and I'm just gonna start shaping this curve so I'll rotate that and now I can start scaling these points until it's matching pretty much what I uh, I want so rotate that a little um, it's actually already pretty close to what I need Cool. Um, so you know, what? Uh, we'll just stick with that. So now we have this 3D curve. What are we gonna do with it? What we will do is go over to our options over here and go to the object data. And you have your curve object right here. I'm gonna expand this a little. And what you can do is fill it in, and you're basically gonna be using extruding and depth over here to fill that out into a 3D object. So we're going to do full fill right here. Uh, I think it's depth. So you're going to turn up the depth. And as you can see, it's all turning up equally. And we're going to want this to kind of start out skinny and get larger. We're, we'll fix that a little later. Right now, we're just going to, I'm going to fill out so it's as wide as the smallest one. And I'm actually going to even move that in a little to make sure it's, completely inside the mesh. That one looks good already. Cool. So now you can see this is kind of blocky and chunky and doesn't look very good. So you could actually pump up the resolution. You can see just by adding one bit of resolution that already made it look much better. I'm going to go up to two and that'll be uh, good enough for our purposes. Uh, let's just make sure we're happy with this. Because once we do what I'm going to do next, there's no going back. Okay, so that's that's good. Now what we're going to do is actually create a mesh object out of this from the curve. All you have to do is hit Alt-C and convert to, we're going to do mesh from curve. And now once I've selected that, you can see I lost all of my curve options. And when I go into edit mode, it's now uh, vertices. So... We're gonna we're gonna uh, fill in these points right here. What I could actually do is, if you hit B, you could box select vertices like that, or if I hit C, it gives me this little selector, and I could uh, if I hold down right click, I could paint over the vertices as well. And then if I uh, scroll up or down on the mouse wheel, middle mouse button it'll expand it or decrease the size of this and I can hold down the middle mouse button to deselect vertices as well so I'll select this ring right here and what we're gonna do is scale this up using something called proportional editing and that is another very helpful tool in modeling that's basically where I could start over here and scale this up and instead of having to go through each and every one and scaling them up individually I'll have basically a window of influence that the closer one of these uh, vertices is to the initial ones that I have selected, the more or less they will be affected by whatever I'm doing. So if I'm rotating, so I'll, I'll show you to, it's easier to show it than to explain it. So basically you could hit the O button to turn on proportional editing, or I could go down here 
and this little button right here, I could uh, enable it. And it's going to start out on uh, the, I believe, is that the smooth one? Yeah, which is good for what we have. We'll go over maybe some of these later. But right now, it will stay with smooth fall off. And as you can see, as I scale that up, more of these are being scaled. Although it's not really doing anything. That's not what I want it to do right now. But uh, you could also see if I rotate this, it's going to start influencing those as well. And uh, same with just moving, moving objects as well. So uh, what I want to do is hit scale, I believe Alt S. Um, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna start from like right here. So we'll start scaling those up. Hmm. How did I do this? I might just do it in, in chunks. So we'll start with this one. We'll scale that up a little bit. Well, you know, I will start over here. So we'll scale that up. Move that around a little. Scale that up. Move that around. Scale that up. And then scale this one. Um, all right. I'm gonna turn off proportional editing and scale it up just a little more. I'm gonna rotate it a little. Cool. And then we'll just maybe fix proportional editing again. Fix a couple of these. Maybe scale that up a little as well. So uh, let's let's look at that. That's looking uh, pretty good actually. So you can be happy with that. I will now uh, join these two meshes together. To do that, I could uh, right click on this one, then hold down Shift and right click on my second mesh. If you hit Control J, it will combine them. And it looks like that's looking okay. Um, I will add my subsurf modifier to that. And now uh, that's looking like a pretty okay mug. Cool. So now we'll just create a plate. So so now let's say if I want to turn off this background image, I want to use a different one. Uh, there's a, a couple ways you can do it. You can just turn on, click on this eye to turn it on and off. Or I could just delete it all together. Uh, the other thing is, uh, I didn't go over this actually. Right now I have this on all views, which means... Any perspective view that I'm using, front view, side view, top view, camera, oh, camera view doesn't have it, but uh, most views will have it. Uh, I might, I like for this one, for instance, I'd only want it in, you know, front or side view. So you could actually select it like that, or I could have it in only camera view. I don't, I'm not sure why it's actually not showing up right now, but... Um, yeah, um, going to turn that one off. And now let's just create a plate. So for this, I'm just going to move this over. With a plate, I just looked at some reference images of plates. Uh, I don't really need anything to model because it's so basic. So I'm going to hit Shift S to move the 3D cursor back to the center. And I will add another circle. Keep it at 16 vertices. And I'll just, so this will basically, this initial circle right here will be our the center of the plate. I'm going to extrude that a little, just move it up slightly. Si oh, turn off proportional editing. Size that up. Extrude up again. Size it up a little more. This is kind of like our 
edge of the plate. This is the inside of the plate turning into the outer rim of it. So now I'm gonna extrude up maybe like that much and we'll, I might, yeah, that's actually, it's probably okay. I might move that down a little bit like that. And I'm just gonna look at this plate from the top real quick. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just fill in this face right here. Um, that's looking pretty okay. And maybe for one more, since I like to round everything off. Rise that up a little. Maybe I'll move that down just slightly scale it down okay so yeah so I'm uh, you know pretty simple plate but I'm happy with it so now instead of uh, extruding around the whole thing to create a shell of it what we could do is use another modifier called the solidify modifier and it'll just automatically give it some thickness so we can scale that up until we're happy with the thickness that's pretty good right there and uh, once we've done that it will also add a subdivision surface do that twice um, we will go back to smooth editing and I'll have to fix that really quick okay cool so there is our nice new plate so I'll move this on top of the plate now I might scale that plate up a little just to make it make sense um, if I go into this mode so like right here it's pretty hard to see anything you could actually once you add a subdivision surface to something it kinda is really hard to see in uh, wireframe view so if you you could actually just turn it off or you could go to oh, what is it optimal display there we go so you can turn on optimal display so you can see through it again. And with this one, I'm just going to move it down until it's touching the top of the plate. So that is good. Cool. And now I'm just going to add a basically table for us to put this on. Add another circle. I'm going to have this one filled and I'm just gonna scale that up something like that and with this I will just extrude down so I'll have a thickness I'm happy with and then I'm just gonna add one I'll actually add two so if I want to add more than one loop cut I can scroll up or down on my middle mouse button and I have two I'm gonna scale them up just so when I add a subdivision surface to this it's going to have semi harsh edges so I'll do that and then I'm gonna add one more in the middle and I'm gonna scale it up ever so slightly just to give it kind of a rounded edge so now when I add my subdivision um, smooth shading there now we have a nice little rounded table and uh, the other thing is we're gonna want to make sure this plate is now sitting on the table correctly which it looks like it is so uh, that, pl that mug looks giant I'm gonna scale that down a little there we go yeah that looks okay um, and then so for that that final image that I created I just duplicated those two so I uh, move those over if I hit G and then shift Z it'll let me move this along the top of the table without actually having to worry about it moving up and like pass through the table Basically, shift Z or shift any uh, axis will axes will let you move it against all everything but the one you choose. So since I did shift Z, it'll let me move on X and Y, but not Z. So I'm gonna move that over like that a little, 
and then I will uh, hit Shift D to duplicate that plate, and then Shift Z again. I'll move that over here. I'll create another mug. Shift D, and now this one I just kind of rotated onto its side until it was touching. I might actually, uh, there we go. If I double tap Z, it'll let me move it along the Z axis of the object instead of the world Z axis. Okay, so I'll just do something like that. There we go. Um, and then with the the coffee pot, I created it the exact same way. I just um, added a new back uh, background image. Open, and it was the it was this one. And I'll just really quickly kind of create that. I'll do a little. Speed modeling. Okay, so what I'm doing here is um, I only want to model half of this so that I don't have to do the work twice. So what I'm going to do is delete half of the vertices on this. I put a, a edge loop down the middle. And now what I'm going to do is add a mirror modifier, which will basically you know mirror it across that axis. So what I actually want to mirror it across the Y, not the X. So now, now I have that full object back again.
Okay, so now that I have this uh, coffee pot made, I'm just gonna scale that about there, put it on the table. Okay, and rotate that a little bit, move it back there. And to, to place my camera from wherever I'm looking, I just uh, get in a position I want to view it from, and I hit Control alt 0 from the number pad, and it will just add your camera there. So now I can zoom in to make that larger, um, T and N. And I'm just going to frame this up like I want. So I'm going to... Actually, what you can do with your camera is you can turn on, uh, well, you can turn on like title safe and stuff like that, but you can also go into this composition guides, and I usually turn on thirds. Uh, you're going to want to, basically these points right here, every frame is, is cut into thirds, and uh, these points where those thirds intersect are areas where people's eyes usually focus on an image so um, a lot of time I'll use that to compose my images so right there I'm gonna put these lines intersecting with my cup with this one I'll, I'll move that over a little more I might rotate that like that I'll move the plate as well I think I had it something like that uh, cool and now I'm just going to um, I'll add a little back wall like that. Scale it up and then just move it so it's filling the frame. Cool. And uh, I mean, since we're not going to render this yet, that is pretty much it. That's uh, how I created that. And those are the basics of modeling. Obviously, you could get much more in depth than that, but. Um, this is a good starting point. I would recommend just finding simple objects like that to start modeling and play around with it and start getting a little more advanced as you go. Um, here's actually a good website to give you uh, objects to, to start modeling with. There's this website called theblueprints.com, which is, uh, this is one of the first places I found when I first started using Blender. And they've got you know, all these different categories here are the most popular. So you know, humans, cars, obviously, they have guns on here. A lot of the a lot of the ones on here actually are vector, what they call vector drawings, which are much higher quality and they're usually much more detailed. And they do charge for those, but if you want to just use some free ones. You know, I think they, they do have plenty of those. So we'll go to, you know, we'll go to humans. And we just say, uh, so we'll just, you know, so you can just look at one of these, just go to mail, and uh, there you go. They give you a front and a side view to start modeling with. I, you know, I actually did probably start modeling humans first because, of course, that's what everyone wants to be able to create as uh, characters, which is very good to get into. I'm still uh, learning that because that is... Uh, much more difficult than obviously creating a little mug but work at it but don't don't get discouraged if you start off with something very complex like a human and you're not happy with your result just keep at it and uh, you will get there so I'm gonna call that the end of this tutorial so thanks for watching and um, the next tutorial in this series will be uh, material basics in blender so thanks for watching